There we go. Hi, everybody. This is Vicki. Chuck is outside, but he did pray over you and over me before he left. And uh, I have a message for you that Father gave me. <clears throat> Started on the 16th of, is that right? Yes, on the 16th. And then pretty much was mostly, I, I received a little bit more yesterday, but I really wanted to wait and see if there was anything else. And I felt this morning like he was saying, nope, that's it. So, um, I'm going to read it to you, let you know there will be a transcript on our website, transcript on, I'm not going to put the whole transcript, I don't think I'm going to put the whole transcript on the community page, simply because I can't get it all usually in one uh, post. And so sometimes people only see the first part and don't realize there's a second post with the rest of the transcript. So I'm just going to put a link there and it will take you to my blog. Uh, I know Suzanne will probably get it up on the website this weekend sometime, not today. Uh, but uh, anyway, oh, and saying that, I want to say it is December 18th, 2021. It is now 3.17 p.m. This is a wonderful message, but they all are wonderful messages. Chuck and I want to say thank you to everyone who comes to the channel. Thank you to our new subscribers for subscribing and to everyone who has subscribed in the past and liked and shared and and uh, posted comments and sent us emails. We appreciate you guys all so much. And the sharing is really important. I guess the liking and subscribing are really important because it raises us in the whatever numbers that gets us out to more people so that more people hear Father's messages. As a matter of fact, just saying that, I did get a comment from a gal yesterday who said, that I just showed up, uh, whatever the video was I did, just showed up in her YouTube feed and she clicked on it and didn't know anything about it. So please, you guys, subscribe, like, share. Even if you don't subscribe, please share the videos, like the videos, do whatever if they minister to you. And then I also want to say from both of us, we appreciate so much those of you who are helping us financially. We want you to know that what you help us with to be able to pay our bills and stuff, we also are helping other people. I'm not saying that for any glory. I just want you to to all know that we, uh, we know it's really important that we do whatever we can, however Father directs us, to help others in the body of Christ. And not just in the body, but there are people out there who who have a lot of need and, and Father knows how to direct us if we'll just follow him. One of my favorite scriptures, <laughs> Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. You know, we just had, before I get into this message, let me just share this with you. We have a leadership meeting on Saturday mornings and uh, we call it the Saturday Circle and it consists of the leaders of this ministry. And today, one of the things that was really a hot topic and pretty much the topic was uh, the issue of trust, having faith in God, trusting in God. And, uh, and how very important that is. And you know, sometimes we think, oh, I trust you completely, Lord, kind of like Peter did. And we go on and, and then something comes up and it's really a trial. And and how do we stand? You know, do we still stand in trust and confidence in God or do we get shaky and fall? I believe that trust is an ongoing thing in the life of the follower of Christ. I just, you know, maybe there are some who have gotten to the place where they are completely thoroughly, fully, absolutely dead to self. And that's awesome. I think that's a journey we should all be on so that we really do trust him because he knows what's best. So even in the hard times, he's doing a thing. Okay, guys, so this message, really what's so interesting about this to me is it all started, I don't, I don't wanna say it started with a dream, but it kind of did. I put a message out I don't remember what the date was recently, and I can't even tell you the name of the message. Uh, but it was just, it was the last one I did before this one. I'm just going to flip to it really, really quickly. And um, in that message, oh, it was to the prophets, the leaders, and his people. And I kept trying to insert this 
dream in that message when I was recording and it just wasn't fitting something wasn't right and I finally said father do, am I even supposed to put this part in because a whole bunch of things came at the same time he said no <laughs> so so I stopped trying to put it in there he said this was a message all by itself so this dream that I had last week that is kind of the foundation of the the beginning of this message I have to tell you what the dream was and let me let me just say this you guys how do i say this father is not interested in our uh uh let's see i'm not even sure how to say it god doesn't care uh so much about how we look to other people he truly does not care and so i'm gonna i'm just gonna start with this um I have to tell you this part first and then I'll tell you the dream so this is just always humbling stuff and it's good and I'm okay with doing it please don't think I'm not okay with doing it I am okay with telling you this uh, I had for almost my whole life I had pretty teeth and um, but they were not strong teeth and I remember when I was I may be in my 20s I think back then a dentist told me you know your teeth they're really pretty but they're just really not worth anything you're, you're probably going to end up losing them all and need dentures and I thought oh my gosh that can't possibly be right well over the years as time would go on there would just be another tooth that would just lose it and I took care of my teeth it wasn't that there was just something about my teeth and so finally a few years ago while Chuck and I were still in the entertainment business um I decided I'd gotten to where it just tooth after tooth and finally my dentist said what is it you want to have what do you want to do what about your teeth and I said I would like to have my teeth all match and uh, be look nice you know I sing my mouth I use my mouth that's how I and look I'm doing it still to this day anyway she said okay well so what we did was we we took the remaining teeth and they and she put crowns on them now a lot of people call them caps I think that was the old language but anyway they're called crowns and so almost all of my teeth are crowns they don't come out um, and there's some really interesting stuff about having all new teeth in your mouth one of those things that's interesting is that it changes the way you talk now I'm telling you all of this for a reason okay it changes the way you talk your words have to get around like the letter s and and just you have to learn a whole new way you have to adjust to the new uh the new layout of the teeth in your mouth so okay so so there you go so all of my upper teeth are now crowns i my mouth is full of crowns i have some teeth on the bottom just a few in the front that don't have crowns but even the ones in the back and all the ones on the top and we just decided to stop where we stopped I, and I, okay so there's probably relevance to that in this message as well okay so then now on to the dream i hope you're sticking with me <laughs> okay so on to the dream um uh, in this dream I was this is about a week ago I was in my dentist's office but the thing is in real life my dentist is a woman and she's a phenomenal dentist but in this dream my dentist was a man and he was a very kind man a very loving man and I knew this man I knew this dentist and he had a woman in his chair and he was working on her oh this just makes me want to cry he had a woman in his chair and he was working in her mouth just so carefully and lovingly and tenderly but very skilled he knew exactly what he was doing and then there were some things that happened after that but I'm just going to share that part of the dream with you because part of the rest of it is personal and then the very end is not personal I may come back to that at the end of this message but for now I want to just explain the little bit some of you already know the dentist was the Lord and the woman that was in the chair while she was uh, having her teeth worked on um, she looked over at me at one point she didn't know I was sitting there watching her and she knew me but she wasn't aware I was in the room and so I spoke to her and when she turned and saw that it was me she was very pleased okay okay <laughs> so here's the deal um, the woman I believe that father has told me the woman represents the body of Christ this is not about me please don't think I'm saying this is about me it is not about me and the dentist 
our father is working in our mouths it this is you know some people go oh no this is going to be a message about words and all that kind of stuff well yeah in in great measure it is going to be that but there uh, there's a lot of stuff in it so i hope that you'll stick around but the dentist was working very lovingly in this woman's mouth and one of the things about the importance of the crowns i will get to that in a minute when i get in the message uh and the fact that i didn't i had i knew in the dream that i had all of my dental work done for now i i didn't know if there was going to be more but i knew for now i had all of my crowns in place okay okay so now now oh father i pray for everyone to have ears to hear whatever we're supposed to hear i think i said to this this to you at the beginning chuck's already prayed over you and i've prayed over you i really i i'm excited about this message because because there's some wonderful wonderful revelation that's going to come into some people as a result of this message okay okay so now here's here's how this message goes you guys he's he gave me that dream but he gave me that dream at the same time he was giving me things for another message and so like i said i wasn't sure if i was supposed to go with that or not so when he when i finally sat down with this and he said it was this message um i asked him what he wanted me to call this and i immediately heard bear your teeth bear your teeth okay so when you think of bearing and it, this will i put some of this uh, in the transcript uh, that's going on i took webster's dictionary the essential meaning of bear is not having a covering on your teeth in the thesaurus it's an adjective and it means being this and no more that's a synonym um let's see it means mere or very other words that are related to bear mean absolute all out out and out outright pure sheer simple stark total unadulterated unalloyed unmitigated unqualified utter alone lone lone only singular soul solitary solo unique free from all additions and embellishments and uh, so, uh let's see another some more some more synonyms for bear are bald naked plain plain vanilla simple unadorned undecorated unembellished unornamented unvarnished in other words there's nothing else but bear nothing else but what they actually are and this has significance to this message i hope you're staying with me you guys okay so so here's how father did this um he told me this way he said there's uh, there are several visions throughout this message and all of those visions aside from the dream which was received earlier all of the visions came in about a 24-hour period and he wanted me to insert those visions throughout the message because they pertain to the message so are you ready <laughs> okay oh thank you father before i read this i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna play one of chuck's music videos at the end so you can hear some more of his beautiful music okay father says here we go the winds of my spirit are blowing much stronger now the war in the heavenlies increases daily and will soon touch the earth in new ways idol worship celebrations of the occult and satanism are openly parading through the streets and in every form of media blatant rebellion is being honored in your governments your court systems and your educational institutions even as the warfare increases in the skies above you so it increases on the earth the clash between my angelic host and the fallen angels continues to intensify and my people need to be aware continue to draw near to me continue to pray seek me for direction and i will lead you to know how when and what to pray be aware be mindful now is not the time to let your guard down those days are past and you must always be aware that you stand in the midst of a great battle you are the target the enemy has set his sights on to destroy his weapons are pointed directly at you every moment I'm going to read that again but be first before i do i want to say this because father keeps saying this to me now is not the time to let your guard down those days are past uh 
the and father said it isn't that there was ever a time we were supposed to let our guard down but it's that people have done that thinking it was okay and he's saying the days for thinking it's okay to let your guard down you need to let go of that those days are past okay but i want to read this last because uh, he's touching me to read these last two sentences again our last three those days are past and you must always be aware that you stand in the midst of a great battle you are the target you we you are the target the enemy has set his sights on to destroy his weapons are pointed directly at you every moment okay and then he had me come out of the message and put this vision in that he'd given uh, I saw a person, person watching something on a device like a television, a computer screen, or a phone, an electronic device, and coming through the screen into the eyes and ears of the viewer were demonic influences and even demons. And I'm going to sort of read what I've written because I want to stay fairly true to what the transcript is going to be, you guys. Uh, as the viewer chooses to watch and listen, it gives the demonic entity permission to assault the viewer in some way. The viewer is weakened by the attack, which may or may not be perceived by the viewer. However, permission has been given for the entity to enter the viewer through mental, physical, emotional, or spiritual means. Unless the viewer is aware, the attack continues and the viewer is compromised. Repentance must be immediate or the seeds which, which have been planted will take root and begin to grow. And then he reminded me of the parable of the tares about the wheat and the tares growing up at the same time. But he said the, wheat, the seeds will grow quickly and the evidence of their presence may be difficult to detect. As the enemy grows bolder, however, Father says the evidence will become more obvious much more quickly. And then there was a second vision. He said, I, or I, I saw one of Father's messengers leaning over a person and like an umbrella, like they were leaning over like a, um, here, I got to fix that word here. Uh, like they were, uh, like it was an umbrella over this person, but it was, but it was bigger than that. It completely covered the person, you know, all the way down to the ground. Okay, so I saw one of Father's messengers leaning over a person to protect him or, or her and Okay, I'm back. I got to tell you, uh, I'll finish this part. Uh, here, let me just finish this part. I got, uh, you guys, sometimes we don't think the things that Father's trying to tell us or wants us to understand are really uh, that important. I'm telling you, uh, well, and I've known this was important, but I, and I'm saying this because you would not believe the warfare that's gone on. And... <laughs> Oh my goodness sakes. You guys get this. This is really important stuff. You wouldn't believe the warfare that's gone on just in the last uh, few days. And it's this message. Okay. So let me go back into us sharing the vision with you. And yes, my nose is itching and I'm not going to pay any attention to it. So don't you either. <laughs> okay. But my the reason I said I'm back is because my computer has been having a terrible problem uh the last oh 36 hours whatever okay so let me get back into this vision i'm sorry for the distraction i saw one of father's messengers leading me over a person there was a uh this messenger was really covering the person like an umbrella but not quite because it was just all over i think that probably represented prayer that we cover each other with prayer um and then standing out in front of the person being covered was another being and this being had sword drawn and was in a war against something that was coming against that person to try and destroy them um let's see okay and then uh, father showed me the holy spirit is in charge of the battle taking place on the earth and directing the warfare and i even asked him about that i was like holy spirit wouldn't it be jesus and he said holy spirit came Jesus is coming back. Messiah is coming back. But Holy Spirit is here on the earth now. And so Holy Spirit is the one that's been given charge of the battle. Okay, now I uh, went on and saw father's children on the battlefield. Many of them had fallen on their backs and they were weary. They were wounded. I saw messengers coming into coming to each one and they were reaching into the mouths of the fallen. Now, not everybody. I, I didn't I don't know that this happened with everybody, but there were those who the messengers were coming and they were reaching into their mouths and taking out the false teeth uh, 
So now we're coming into the teeth thing, you guys. <laughs> the lies, the deception, the false teachings, false teachings, the false belief systems, the lies, the self-pity, the works of the flesh, all of these things that you know proceed from our, our mouths. And in the places of the false, they were filling their mouths with the crowns of the kingdom words. Now, I understand that Father is the one behind the filling. He's the one that he's the dentist. He's the one that's doing the work. Um, and as uh, each soldier begins to use those teeth to chew on words of truth and speak with crowns, of the kingdom words they begin to rise and enter the battle once again with songs of victory songs of honor praise to god songs of obedience agreement with the promises and majesty of god um, oftentimes i i suspect that most of you know this but oftentimes father will use things in the natural to show us something that's going on in uh, the spiritual or the prophetic like like using my teeth and showing me that in myself, what I had, and this had happened to me too in my life, I had a lot of things that I had learned that were false teachings. Father took the false out of me and he showed me that symbolically by taking, by being the dentist in the chair and showing me he was working on me and he had put these crowns of his kingdom, the words in my mouth. Those are the crowns, not the actual crowns. It's the crowns of the kingdom words that he wants in our mouths. Okay, so I see these uh, fallen, fallen soldiers getting up and he said, he also showed me that the fallen soldiers have to be willing to open their mouths and let the false go. They have to be willing to receive the new crowns. This is, there's not room in the mouth for both the false and the crowns of the kingdom. And it's a choice every one of us has to make. Um, now, uh, in saying that, a lot of us have grown up being taught things that are they're just not truth. And uh, as and the thing about letting those things come out, well, I, I don't want to run too far ahead of the message here, but sometimes it's difficult to let go of the things we've been taught. We actually were talking about this in our meeting this morning. Okay. Now we're going to go back into Father speaking directly. He says, the enemy has worked your entire life to entice you to use his words. He knows the power of life and death are in the tongue. He knows your words not only affect those around you, but they also affect you. Some of you have been easily persuaded to speak death over circumstances and over people and over yourselves. I have said in my word that you will judge angels. And so I ask you now, how will you judge those whose words you agree to speak? Your mouth must be clean. Your teeth must be strong. I am replacing the old carnal teeth that cannot chew up and spit out the spiritual words, the death-filled words of the enemy. I am the dentist working in the mouths of many of my people. Your language, your words must be filled with the truth of my word. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I am and have been working on the hearts of many who have chosen to give me everything for the sake of my kingdom. I am putting strong teeth crowns in those mouths now. I am giving them strong teeth to tear down the strongholds and rend the plans of the enemy. I am doing a work in the mouths of my people that can only be done by me, but my people must be willing to allow this work to be done. My people must be willing to open their mouths, their lives, and allow me to find and expose the decay. They must allow me to search every hidden place and to patiently permit me to drill, scale, scrape, and eliminate the diseased places and the false in them. At times, this will be a painful experience, but it will yield healthy results. When I crown your mouth, you will speak and lives will be blessed. You will speak and encouragement will rise up in the listener. You will speak and lives will be changed for you will be speaking kingdom words. I will give you crowns of the kingdom 
words. I will put them in your mouths and you will no longer be a soldier fallen down lying on your back as the war rages on around you. You will rise to your feet and fight with the crowns of the kingdom, words of power that the enemy has fought your entire lives to keep you from finding and speaking. You will no longer carelessly allow words of death and agreement with the enemy. You will weigh your words and choose wisely how you will speak. The fruit of your words will be good, for you will say those things that bring life and not death, hope and not despair, confidence and not fear, blessing and not cursing. And then he wanted me to put this vision in that he gave. I saw a person that was speaking negative words. They weren't even necessarily words that were bad words, but they were just negative, you know, not life-giving words. The demon had permission to stab that person and the evil words were suggested to the person by the demon. But uh, Father wants us to understand that we can fall into a pattern where that's just our normal way of speaking. Um, Anyway, the person could choose to receive and speak the words or not, but by choosing to receive and speak it, the person gets stabbed by the demon. I, that's what I saw. Every time we speak something negative, we get stabbed by that demonic entity. Um, and also the person or the circumstances being spoken over get stabbed. The enemy, you know, we're releasing things. And so uh, then I saw that the person who was Choosing to speak the evil words was weakened by the words that were being spoken. And like I said, they didn't have to be necessarily negative words by the speaker's standards. You know, when you're used to saying things that are just not life-giving words, it doesn't seem like it's that big a deal. But Father's saying that, yeah, it's that big a deal. <laughs> okay, and actually, here's what he said. Father said, death was spoken out. Death was administered to the person too. And he said this, repeat that. He said, death was spoken out. Death was administered to the person too. So he had me, he wanted me to say that to you guys twice. Then the vision continues. I saw many on the battlefield who were there in part because they had spoken so much death. So if we continue to speak wrong things, we do get weary. We do get worn out. How... I mean, we just, and it's hard because we're not fighting with life-giving words, crowns of the kingdom words. We're battling the enemy, trying to battle the enemy using his words. Well, that's not going to happen or his suggestions, however you want to say it. So uh, he said, he showed me many were on the battlefield on their backs uh, in part because they spoke so much death, doubt, unbelief accusation, deception, what we in the States call little white lies, mockery, sarcasm, fear, pride, punishing words, judgment, criticism, gossip, ridicule, antagonism. All of these things uh, were the things that he gave me to, to put here that, that he's saying these are death giving words. And then I saw a dark cloud come against someone and as the person stood on truth, and spoke truth, the cloud withdrew to a distance and uh, the person had rebuked it, but the cloud didn't just go away. The cloud re retreated and grew smaller, but then it did that to regroup. And this was the enemy. He was, you know, his little demonic thing, withdrawing to regroup and come back stronger mm, uh, for another time. And uh, and that just reminds me of the scripture where Jesus was in the wilderness and he had, every time Satan would come against him, he spoke scripture. He spoke the word. He is the word and he spoke the word. And he's reminding me now, this is what he told me this morning, that the rest of what he has for me to share with you guys is stuff he's going to put in my mouth while I'm talking. Okay. So this morning, uh, or so the, uh, when in the scripture where it talks about how Jesus was in the wilderness and that the enemy, oh, Satan came and Jesus rebuked him with the word. Thank you, Father. I'm trying to get my train of thought back. He's, uh, it says in some versions, it says at the end of the, those verses that Satan withdrew until a more opportune time. And we know that more opportune time came at the end. But 
He also reminded me, or is reminding me now, of the vision that he gave. I can't remember when it was, you guys. It's in one of the messages. It's uh, something about the word. I can't remember the exact title, but it's where I had the vision of seeing him as the word and how I saw him. I saw him in his robe. I saw him uh, covered everywhere, head to toe, face everywhere on him, words words. He is the word and he was literally covered in words. It's a beautiful vision. I hope you'll go find that and, and uh, listen to it if you haven't heard it. Okay, let's see. So then father comes back in. That's the end of the vision as and he says this battle you are in this father speaking again, this battle you are in not simply the one you are in today, but this battle for your death and defeat is going to increase.